Welcome to That's a Wrap, the channel where I review TV shows and movies. Today, I will be reviewing episode 7 of WandaVision called Breaking the Fourth Wall. But before I get into the review, if you like the content, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell for notifications. If you haven't seen WandaVision, what are you doing here? If you're not caught up with the episodes, what are you doing here? And if you haven't seen episode 7, what are you doing here? But consider this your spoiler warning. So let's get the semantics out of the way. This episode was enjoyable from start to finish. It wasn't the strongest entry as far as the series as a whole. I still enjoyed it. There was a few acting parts where I think it wasn't as strong as other episodes performance but nothing that really knocked me off from enjoying this episode for what it was which was pure enjoyment i know a lot of people are excited or talking really really highly about this episode i only because of the re the huge reveal at the end we all kind of assumed that agnes was agatha from the comics and this episode basically told solidify that at the end and can i just say that her her theme song or her her style of sitcom entry with the monsters was perfection that that right there was the most enjoyable uh, part of this episode that was so well put together and that whole sequence let is leading to so many questions Cause there was such so many things to focus on and it went by so so quick but many people like this episode for that reveal some are actually angry that more wasn't revealed but what do you expect and honestly to just get away from this episode if we're taking this into like a season kind of a feel we're only going to get the last episode is going to give us a big reveal. It's not going to be a fight. It's not going to be this crazy thing. And I know people say the runtime at this point, I don't trust Marvel for anything, whether they're going to tell me, oh, it's three more hours of stuff that we have. I've heard people saying that, oh, it's gonna, after this is going to be a movie. I think it's just like any se any season of a series that is successful. You're going to end on a cliffhanger to bring you into season two to continue that storyline. And why wouldn't you continue WandaVision and adapt it to what you're already doing? I'm sure they probably already thought about this. But if we take it for season one of Friends or anyone, season one of any season and any series that you like, it ends on the cliffhanger, not some kind of crazy tell-all of a story or, or of an arc. No, it's going to leave you something to look forward to for the three months until the season picks back up or however it goes that the normal sitcoms when they have their little break and then they, they come back later on in the year. But to, to come in with a season two. So I just want to make sure people are aware of that, that it might not be this huge thing that, oh, we're going to have a huge boss fight. We might not have any boss fight. It could be just a simple, hey, look, now we're going to reveal last episode towards the end of the episode. Here's the big bad or here's what we're going to allude to the big bad. Remember, this is the first thing we're seeing coming off from the snap. People expectation that we're going to start having bam right back into this super monster jump right back in. I don't, I don't think that's what is in play here. I mentioned it in a, pri in a prior video. This is all laying down foundations for where we move post endgame. This thing's shot or supposedly we're a month away from endgame. This whole thing with WandaVision. For them to go in, you know, for Kevin Feige to go in and say, hey, I'm going to just go right into same story mode. I don't I don't think that's I hope that's not what everyone is thinking. And I, and I hope no one has those kind of expectations. This is all 
grounding what we are about to see. And I think many can agree with that aspect, but how everyone's going, oh, it's Mephisto. Oh, it's this bad. Oh, it's going to be this. And I get it. it. It brings views in. It brings stuff when it's all speculative. I just don't think this is what that is. And I'm not saying those bad people or those villains aren't coming in. I think if they do come in, it's still going to be in a sitcom style. If they're going to come in at the end, whether they continue WandaVision as a season two or as they end it as a as a joke. Hey, it's going to be a season two and lead us into a two and a half hour movie. I'm okay with either one of those scenarios, but I think that's the scenario because it's holding true to what we've been seeing since episode one. It's hum a homage to, or a homage, homage, a homage to sitcoms from the from the creation of the I Love Lucy, which I still hold. That's the 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 episode one is is a tribute to I Love Lucy because they started what we consider the modern sitcom the way it's shot the way everything was it was started there and we are going to end i don't know maybe we're gonna have a game of thrones episode because that seemed to be the the more popular more recent one that we've had i don't know what we're gonna get in the in the ninth eighth or ninth episode but i think we're gonna end in a tv series style which is gonna be on a cliffhanger. And I'm hoping that it doesn't pee off a lot of people because it, so many people are so invested in this meanie. Oh no, it's this bad guy. Oh no, it's that bad guy. The way it's going, we're just two episodes left. So if you're gonna tell me that they're gonna try to fit some kind of epicness in these last two episodes when we still have so many questions and that have yet to be revealed, that I think you're kidding yourself. I think you're setting yourself up for disappointment when at the ninth episode, it's gonna be this big reveal and we're gonna be like, oh, that, that's it? You're not, we're not gonna see a, a conclusion and that's the path we're going and I hope that reaction is not what we get when there's huge frustration. Hey, we should have done this. We should have seen this. We should have, you know, we should have, should have, should have. That ends up ruining things because they put such a negative light on it. But anyways, that was a long tirade about not this episode. But I want to just make sure that, well, not that it matters what I say, but I uh, the conversation that I'm hearing is that, oh yeah, for sure, we are going to get this. And it took us seven episodes for them to confirm that Agatha, I mean, Agnes was Agatha, even though there was all these theories and ideas, but it took them that long. And you're telling me, oh, it took them that long to show us Agatha. So, but in the next two, we're going to, oh yeah, we're going to get Mephisto. We're going to get the Fantastic Four. We're going to get Wolverine. Oh, we're going to get like this. I'm like, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. I get we're all excited. I'm surprised no one's telling me like Thanos is going to come back on episode nine for some reason because of the mind bending universe that Wanda's doing. The, the amount of villains or theories around this thing is crazy. So I don't think that that's, you know, that's the point of my tirade. I just think people are just going way too, too heavy for something that has been given to us wall proportioned in little bite size that we could consume. But at the end of it though, they're just gonna make us gorge, right? Even though they're putting us on a diet, they're, they're doing this on purpose. This is how they're training us basically. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe these next two episodes that we're gonna see this coming Friday and the last one are gonna be jam packed and we're gonna go, you know, all out and it's gonna be just this epicness. So I'm hoping the majority is right and I'm in the minority that it's just gonna be this normal sitcom ending. But anyways, tirade over. Back to this episode, which was great. The opening parts with it that everyone was, you know, already saying, oh, it's The Office or a Modern Family. I, I think it was a, a little bit of both, but definitely more of The Office kind of a feel. Even with that breaking of the fourth wall, both episode, both series were known for breaking the, the fourth wall. The Malcolm in the Middle one was more of breaking the fourth wall, but 
I enjoyed it. It was fun to see them in that style of acting, you know, but the sets didn't really remind me of The Office or Modern Family. The way Wanda was portraying her her uh, character definitely had that that Dunphy feel. The her name is Kate Claire Claire Dunphy. Definitely had that feel to Claire to 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 her. So I could definitely understand where everybody, especially in that promo scene that was on before this episode, like uh, Monday, right, or something, where she says it sarcastically like that. Uh, she was the modern family part as opposed to the way it was shot, which I think the way it was shot was very office like to be honest. And I hate being so, uh, critical of, of art or too critical of art. There was a couple of parts, especially in the acting away from the main actors from the from Wanda or Vision, where the acting wasn't as strong as other episodes and i mentioned it in other review videos i think those th these la or at least what i'm seeing and maybe i'm just nitpicking or maybe i just have a horrible eye but i think i think i vaguely remember that while they were shooting this series they had to stop obviously for the from the pandemic going on so they will take weeks on end from production uh, but just some of the acting was similar to those prior episodes so maybe they were all filmed in uh, together during their i don't want to call it quarantine because i really don't know but I, I i vaguely remember there being stoppage because of the whole covid19 scenario and i thought Maybe uh, that affected. I think that affects actually the acting that they were doing. It's really hard to be in character and then all of a sudden have to stop, go away for two weeks and then come back and have that same kind of energy thought process. They seclude themselves for three to four months for a reason. So you could be completely engulfed in everything that is that movie to give the best performance that you can. But when you have this kind of un unforeseen circumstance that we've all have to deal with, when you go away from production and come back, you know, it's, a, it's understandable. And that's why I can't, I, I try to have that in the back of my head every time something doesn't jive, even though I've seen evidence of great acting, a, a top notch acting, from all of those uh, extra, not extras, but not main characters, sub characters of this series. And yes, you know, Monica Rambeau and yes, you know, Wu and yes, Darcy are the ones that I'm talking about. They weren't as crisp as I've seen them in other episodes. It's just something I noticed. The whole, I, the whole circus part was, was okay. But again, being honest, Having Evan Peters in there heavily, obviously in the Halloween episode, and when it started turning over into the circus, all I thought was of American Horror Story. Maybe that's just because it's inf inf infiltrated my mind so much. And the same thing with that carnival scene. I, I don't know why she put, put a carnival there. You know, maybe she thinks the FBI's are all clowns or what they're doing is all just a bunch of clown stuff. And that's why she did it. But we definitely saw today is her losing her power. The whole glitching with the milk, the whole glitching with their house, the whole the uncontrollability of her her powers and with that whole Agna, Agatha being in control or at least we, we think she's been in full control at least or, or maybe just at minimum helping Wanda achieve what she is doing but the fact that her powers were glitching out of control throughout the whole well at least throughout the first the first scene was very interesting to say the least. Again, nit, just nit, me nitpicking just a little bit. I, I get that we're, we're introducing characters. I've said that throughout many videos. This is an introduction. So we are going to, we got introduced to the official, you know, Monica Rambeau turning into Photon, which again, this culture has been saying that since probably the second episode they already knew that eventually she was going to 
turn in, into this. And I get it. We all figured it out. And I I get I get that this was already produced, recorded. It was signed, sealed, delivered. they right to our eyes. But it felt rushed. She felt like they just pushed her in there to fit some kind of narrative. Maybe I'm missing the point of why they rushed it. I just thought it was forced. and Or maybe it's just because of the lack of authority, maybe. You know, like so many movies and shows now, like if that really happened in really real life, if you were in the military or FBI and you not only once, twice, but three to four or five times completely went again against what your purpose in the military, FBI or whatever, you would be fired. So I understood why, you know, Hayward kicked her out, kicked her out because she's not following the actual what be in reality. What you would what would really happen is if someone told you stand down, guess what? You stood down. But no, it's like, oh, if you believe you're right, you know, go against authority. And maybe that's the bothersome part that I have with that whole scene where she just completely over and over and again doesn't care about her molecules changing doesn't care about any any authority but yet i'm supposed to care that she wants to help wanda that she wants to help darcy that she's in this for any other purpose than her own selfish needs and even in that conversation when she's talking to you know uh, wanda about oh i have nothing to lose it's like oh so you're just like don't you're in in, in like you don't care mode so whether you die, whether she takes you out, whether anything happens to you, you aren't in just in a no care scenario. But yet I'm supposed to somehow understand why you want to help Wanda, why you want to help Darcy, why you want to help Vision, why you want to find answers. It doesn't none of that comes through. It seems just like your uh, your ego is getting in the way. And she just ran in and I get it. It was dope to see that transition. I'm just being honest. It reminded me of the girl from uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp. The I can't remember her, the, the characters, but the one that glitched a lot. Literally, it reminded me of that. If you develop, not develop theories or think of theories, you're, you, people will understand this part, is your mind sees something and automatically jumps to, to, to what it thinks it might be. And when she started splitting like that, I just went into quantum realm. I just thought in, I went into quantum realm. I went into uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp and I started remembering that girl glitching. And that's what Monica reminded me in her transition. And I know, you know, she came out and it was great that part when, when she comes out, that thing was so beautifully shot. That's not, the, the visuals were amazing. I just think that her, her arch, is being forced way way too fast and maybe um, there's gonna be a payoff here in episode eight or nine to why it's um it's sped up for me it just feels forced but that that character i don't understand how it's supposed to be i'm supposed to cheer for her to find these answers because she has no she, one minute she doesn't she's telling me she doesn't care and her actions show me she doesn't care. And on the other hand, I'm supposed to cheer for her because she wants to help Wanda and wants to do all this good, but nothing of her actual, the way she's approaching it is telling me that's it. She already knew Wanda didn't like her, yet she's going in there to piss her off even more, even though she knew what happened last time when she brought up her brother. But anyways, I'm starting to get into too much of a, of a it sounds like I'm really, really bad on this episode, but I really, really did enjoy it. It's just those things that I don't know. It just it, for me, it, it just it, it's not hitting it for me as far as that one. Again, superb episode or very, very good episode. Just I wouldn't put it up there to the other ones that I have seen. Again, just me nitpicking so many Easter eggs, so many reveals, so much for so little time, but I'm sure everyone is going to dissect and we will have a ton of videos including myself with ideas and theories what we liked what we didn't like all in all 
I enjoy the horror aspect of this, of where they're taking this. We've not, we've seen this since the, be- the episode one with the choking scene. I've said it. A lot of people have, have said it too. We are watching a horror movie and I can't wait. The, the whole thing has, even with what I just and what, what I just said that sounded like a horrible review of episode seven is very minor. When, when I'm when you go in, there's just me being nitpick after just watching it five times before I hit this, you know, the record button. I tend to think when I feel some way over and over and over again at a certain spot, that's what that's what I feel. Great, good episode, solid. It answered a ton of, of fan theories. It answered a bunch of just regular questions that we had. The mystery is still there as far as what the, who is the other uh, main guy and, or who is the main villain. But let me know what you guys thought about this episode. You guys heard my opinion. I know it was a little bit, Uh, picky on this one but i would love to hear what you thought of this episode so let me know down in the comments and with that thank you guys for listening and that's a wrap